for God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you us in that. Um, any adjustments, any additions that we need to make to the agenda based on what we've got in front of us? Give me a second to look at that. Barring any additions, any additions? George, Janet, Margaret? No. I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I move we approve the agenda as presented. Okay. 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 All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? The agenda is approved. So as we move on tonight to the budget work session, we've got the school board budget presentation with um, Dr. Hester and Shannon Irvin. So we're going to roll right straight into that. Rolling. Shannon's got some updates for us. Okay. Rolling. Mm -hmm. I did. Hey. Which one do you have? Oh, this one's I'd like this synopsis. The synopsis. 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 So um, has yeah. it, let me interrupt. Um, uh, Ms. Irvin, real quick to make sure, do we, do we all have the documents in front of us? Um, it's actually much bigger there, um, but we all have, yep, yeah, okay, there we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to want this. Okay. All right, so we did get the House and Senate um, budgets, mm -hmm. and the count tools have been updated to reflect those. Um, they did not update the count tool for the governor's budget. Um, so I took the liberty of going ahead and correcting the error that was in the count tool. And so the governor's budget is different than what you had seen previously. So the 150,533 um, difference for um, basic aid has been reflected in this new total. Um, there's a document here that summarizes the key differences in the governor's budget, the House budget, and the Senate budget. The ones that um, affect K-12 education are pages two and three of this document. Um, so the changes that have impacted us financially that we know thus far, I have included in the budget document. For example, the governor's budget included a 5% cost of living across the board for SOQ positions. The House and the Senate in a 7% um, increase in salaries for SOQ funded positions. So I have included um, on this synopsis in the governor's budget, there's only the 5% and the House and the Senate, the 7% is mm -hmm. reflected. Okay. Um, other salary increases, um, there was a increase in the Senate um, Finance Committee to do a uh, stipend for board, uh, national board certified teachers. We only have one of those in the division. So it would be just a slight increase of $2,500 for us for that. In terms of bonuses, the governor's budget had a 1% bonus that you could spread around your employees. That 1% we equated to $300 per employee, and the goal there would be to pay it in August for those folks that choose to come back to work next school year. So um, the house appropriations did not include a bonus for across the board SOQ positions. They did have some funds for reg, uh, regional programs, but none that would have affected us. The Senate Finance Committee had a $1,000 bonus for instructional and support positions. Again, you could spread that money across your employees. So we equated that to $500 per employee mm -hmm. and we put that in um, the budget. In terms of the performance bonus, the governor's budget um, references $5,000 bonus to top performing teachers that has yet to be defined. Um, and we don't know how many we have and it's not allotted per division. So we don't know what that number will be for Nelson County. So that has not been taken into consideration. Um, he has a recruitment uh, bonus in for $10 million uh, for a one-time bonus for hard to fill positions in schools. Uh, those funds and the eligibility for those won't be determined until next school year when we look at vacancies and what is yet to be filled. And um, 
that money will be allocated at that time. So that is <clears throat> not in there either. But the distribution of that on their end is totally unspecified. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, support staff cap that was not addressed by either the governor or the house. It was addressed um, in the Senate budget of in the, to the tune of 270.6 million and I believe we saw that that equated to nine support staff positions for us. Mm -hmm. um, specialized support staff that was not addressed by either the House or the Governor's but it was 56.9 million across the state for additional mental health support. Uh, reading specialists um, I don't believe that our uh, enrollment will qualify us for these funds because you had to have in the governor's budget it was 550 students in grades four to five um, we don't come anywhere near that um, and in the house they had more funds 30.8 million again the one to 550 in grades four to five and one to 1150 and six to eight so again we would not qualify for those funds nor would we for the senate so we didn't include anything there uh, instructors for english learners uh, we didn't have any eligibility there so those funds uh, were not included uh, mass specialists uh, funds for K-8 schools with low SOLs. I'm assuming that that will be determined <laughs> after the SOL tests are given whether those funds would be allotted for us for next year or not. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping that we won't need them. I'm hoping that kids will do great. Um, instructional assistance. There is temporary funds um, available next year in both the House and Senate for very troubled schools. Uh, don't think we will qualify for those either, thank goodness. What is the qualifier for that? Well, what is the I think, they're, I think they're still defining it. Uh, yeah. And is there's a difference between just troubled and very troubled? <laughs> I mean, uh, right. The definition yeah. between the two branches. Yeah. We're it's not, not the like two houses. you and me. Mm -hmm. and, you're and I think um, the SBAR report probably will. Right, mm -hmm. I think there's a couple criteria yeah. that will factor into it. Um, but it may not be until they get their data. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, what do you think it's based on? Like performance? It could be based off of performance. It could mm -hmm. be based off of as far discipline. It could be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. based off of any number. Um, it, in in um, in board discussions and state discussions, there has been a concern that there is a lack of schools identified of, um, in need of accreditation, um, almost like. We need more failing schools to recognize right. that it's the system's working <coughs> um, and so we can anticipate over the next three years some adjustments and there's been proposed adjustments to the accreditation and accountability system mm -hmm. so I, I would imagine some of these are incrementally going to feed into some of it depending mm -hmm. on which which house it's coming from mm -hmm. and that hasn't been decided that wouldn't be until 24 25 or 25 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we don't have the definitions on a lot of these okay. things specific and the, the data yeah. the data lags like 18 months minimum something like that probably depends which data you know I mean yeah. we typically have an understanding of what our SOL scores right. are somewhat immediately and definitely by the end of July mm -hmm. um, we, July we definitely start to see the the adjustments for various factors um, but is that what they're going to use I think that's where we're just right. not really confident and that might be why there's some differences between the two yeah. you know like it's like the performance standards what is that right. what's determining how would you distribute the funds? Okay. The hold harmless for the uh, calculation <coughs> era, again, that was not included in the budget for the governor because they were not aware of the problem. Mm -hmm. In the um, House budget, there is some additional support, uh, 4.9 million, and in the Senate, there's additional support in the tune of $58.1 million. Um, school security, there are grants included in the House Appropriations and the Senate uh, Finance. Uh, since they're grants, I'm not sure if they're competitive grants or whether there'll be allotments to divisions, but if they are grants that we can apply for, we certainly will uh, to try to beef up security. 
Um, we do not qualify as the, a high poverty school, um, so we will not qualify for those funds, nor the regional CTE facility. Um, in the governor's budget, there was a pilot program um, targeting mental health in the tune of $15 million. That $15 million is included as school-based pilot and direct aid for the House Appropriations, and the Senate did the same, so they would not apply to us either. No. What is a pilot, like a pilot class? A test, or or oh, try it for a year and see. Well, I mean, I know what a pilot is. I just <laughs> meant, what are they piloting, like curriculum or? Uh, mental health supports. Oh, just yes, okay. 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 Thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. Um, preschool, they were piloting a full day year-round services via mixed delivery. Um, that's $20 million, and the House appropriations kept it the same as the governor's, and the Senate finance uh, increased it to $40 million. So there is a, a desire to reach the very youngest students however they can, whether it is in person or whether it virtually or um, working with special ed and regular ed uh, in the same classroom, so there's that interest as well. Uh, lab school initiatives um, was the same at the um, House appropriation as the governor's and the Senate finance struck it. So. <laughs> They're reallocating the money for lab schools to funding of school divisions. So we'll see where it all shakes out when mm -hmm. it's all said and done. I don't know that we will have a budget that is the House budget or the Senate budget or the governor. I think it will be a hybrid of all three. That's about as far apart as I have ever seen, seen the, the, the budgets. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. And yeah. even even the numbers yes. are so far apart. That's so what I'm talking each, about. Yeah, yeah. Each one of theirs definition of what this means is so spread yeah. out. So question, or maybe you're going to go over the timing of all this stuff, when you think that we'll get more information? I mean, like last year it was down to the wire, right? <coughs> so, but what is yes. a normal year, saying last year was not normal, what's a normal year for timing on this? May? I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the, the, <coughs> the difficult part. It's a short session. Mm -hmm. So there's strong motivation to get this done mm -hmm. um, because when they're in session they're not out campaigning and fundraising mm -hmm. and so their cycle kind of keeps going um, so there's motivation to make sure they shore this up I mean they're aware that last year was tough mm -hmm. they're aware that how that budget cycle mm -hmm. ended up um, impacts everybody I don't think that that's you know something that is a surprise to anybody but I think they you know we've just gone through our last kind of um, collective meetings for the state to discuss these different things. So they're kind of going into where the votes are taking place and the dissemination of information about monies going towards specific things are taking place now. So I think they anticipate, I don't think it's, I don't think there's anybody anticipating, at least that I've heard, that it'll be like last year. I think mm -hmm. they're thinking it'll be a little bit sooner than that. Um, but do I have a date for that? No, I don't. No, I know, but what, I mean, there's usually, it's not usually a time, but it's like usually, well, like we turn ours in and we usually have all the information we need by the middle of March when we turn ours in to the Board of Supervisors, right? I mean, and there, aren't, there are some. Well, we usually you know, go with a budget, a uh, governor's budget, a House oh, budget, okay. or yeah. a Senate budget. And when we have a the, com the committees have finished their work. Mm -hmm. So, it's a matter of just working through it, as okay. opposed to having it go, continue to go back and forth. So, okay. All right. well, I'll yeah. be quiet. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, no, those are good, good questions. questions. No, and I've been hearing a little bit in the media just that there's the way that they uh, make the salad, so to speak, is that once they're done with the committee work, that it goes to some state level, like a bureaucratic committee, mm -hmm. basically that that tries to put everything together that will. You know, everybody can get behind and the governor will sign. Mm -hmm. Basically. Well, yeah, like we they've made the salad, they're putting the dressing on it, in, well, in a sense. You right. know, and I'm I'm just concerned because of the despair and I understand politically what the disparity is between the two parties. Um, you know, that notwithstanding, this is a it's a chasm. You know. Mm -hmm. So, so also a big differential between for us. 
Mm -hmm. you know, when you look at the total numbers and ha the impact of each budget on air numbers, oh, yeah. the differential isn't as big as you would think it would be. No, a different budget. it's pretty interesting on that too. So, also included in this budget, we haven't talked about on the expenditure side. We did get our health insurance renewal, mm -hmm. and that is incorporated on the expenditure side. Instead of the ten percent that we had anticipated, it um, the renewal came in at five and a half percent. They're going to allow a one-time adjustment of one percent. Mm -hmm. So overall, the increase is four point four. That's encouraging. Yes. So what is built in the budget, um, you've got two sheets there that talk about health insurance. And if you look at the fourth column from the right, it's the way to um, distinguish them. Mm -hmm. um, Understood. Yes. So one would be the school board absorbing the entire increase to the health insurance and the other would be the um, school board um, passing on 4.4% increase to the employee. Mm -hmm. What is in the budget now is the school board absorbing the entire cost because we wanted to portray what the actual costs yes. are. And I would say that that's, <clears throat> having recently participated in a Region 5 superintendent's meeting, this is the talk of, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? Because this all impacts mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, are you, it, if you don't do the 7%, you're running, you're competing with other divisions doing the 7%, yeah. if not more. Like some people did 8% last year. Mm -hmm. So everybody's competing for these salaries. Everybody's competing for these mm -hmm. different things to stay competitive. Like um, and it did sound like, by and large, everybody was is doing the seven percent, you know, or or a creative roundabout for it um, that not everybody has an opportunity to do. Everybody was waiting on their health insurance. You know, we were talking to some people who were going to experience a, a ten to twelve percent. Um, so I think that that's um, good news for us. Um, so I think it's important to share that we're having these conversations to try to stay up to date of what are you doing, and no one wants to, you know. They, everybody wants to kind of play their cards close to their vest, but at some point in time, we're all trying to find out how to deal with this. Well, you know, we have a 2% swing, you know, from the original um, estimate of 5%, because that doesn't just impact one small thing. It, it, it has a ripple effect. So, you know, we're very cognizant of that, but, you know, we're also very cognizant of, again, it's built in, built in from both houses for a reason. Mm -hmm. so for a, from a retention standpoint, this health package is what's going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it, it is a, I think it's a great word. It's a package. Mm -hmm. It's a package. Um, it's, it's a part it's of a your package. total compensation. Mm -hmm. um, so and and, and sorry, yeah. factors of travel. It, exactly. Factors of housing. Exactly. Factors of things that it yeah. doesn't matter if I have to pay a whole bunch of gas. That's right. If I'm, you know, so it, it's, a, it's a package. I mean, I've only heard from like Charlottesville, Albemarle, I haven't heard Amherst fucking hand that way yet, but maybe you have. Uh, I haven't, well, haven't heard their health insurance numbers yeah. because this was a week ago. And we, I think I left the meeting and we got it later that day or like the next day after. I'm like, oh, you know, but they're all working through it and I think it's knowing the percentages of what we have to give on the uh, salaries to get the money from the state. And so what does that mean? And they're erasing what it was last year. Like usually in a biennium, yeah. you have to do 10%, 5 and 5, or 7 and 3 or something mm -hmm. like that. And as long as you mm -hmm. do a certain percent, whether they're saying forget last year. You yeah. need to start now. Full new year. Yeah, with at least a certain percentage that has to be done. It's, it's a, a lot of moving parts. You know, if you're not used to a school budget. Is there any, and I know it doesn't help in this budget cycle, but has there been any movement at all? on trying to adjust, adjust this because consumer price right, I, I think we all talk about it, but it's the people who have no impact. You know, I mean, as we don't, I don't determine the LCI. You don't. No. Um, and we all know it impacts us. I mean, I think even with, we were in a fortunate situation to a degree with the calc tool that we didn't get as impacted as some others um, because of 
the state wasn't contributing as much as the locality. Mm -hmm. But you have some other places that can't really can't afford it that are having to, to make up for it. Um, and so I feel like that's a blessing for us for this year. But moving forward, I think it gets brought up. Does it have traction? I don't know. And that's something that, you know, as we talk, I can try to find out more information about it. Um, but I definitely think that those are conversations. Yeah, Again, it's, a, it's another complicated model. And then to adjust it, how do you adjust it in a fair, well, it is. meaningful just, way? Yeah, and I'm just, I don't know. I shouldn't look at the other one. It so adversely affects us as a rural community that heavily relies on Correct. land use. It, it is not an accurate like reflection. It is not an it, accurate reflection. You know, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a smoke screen. And there are probably, I don't know, I'm shooting in the dark, but there's probably a half a dozen counties in the state, maybe a dozen, that this really impacts. Yeah, Homestead area. Uh, you know, there's have we identified and ever tried to partner with those other counties that have the same kind of issue that we have? It would be interesting. Well, this is going to be a lobbying effort. You need yeah, a you need I mean, a delegate in the state senator just to bring like it up. A cohort to region five, like just a cohort to to be able to lobby or say, hey, look. oh gosh, okay. I, like maybe what we had gotten involved with, and I don't know if we're still involved with that, like the rural, rural school thing. consortium. Sure, yeah, uh, we are still a part of that. Yeah, um, I think. It yes. Yes. Necessarily. I would say yeah, that we may in their or whatever where we cover right. over a lot. We are rural areas. and yeah. we match that. And and there are some other rural areas that have to com combat, you know, if you have if you have something that really brings it in. Um, but I would also say that that probably as from the school sides has not been as big of a part of the advocacy movement um, towards things that we're fighting for mm -hmm. um, that would come necessarily from superintendents. Mm -hmm. And because there's just so many other things like we're combating mm -hmm. the cal you know, there's some other things that have been kind of at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So that might not be the first priority. Not that that doesn't make it, it doesn't take right. away from the value of it mm -hmm. and the importance of arguing. Um, it's just, it might not always be at the top of that list. That's where we do this. There's legislative yeah. positions yes. as mm -hmm. a BSBA right. board member. Yeah, the well, capital conference and, and things like that. And it's hard to get it to take traction because it doesn't affect and only so many counties does We're not the biggest effect. voice out there sometimes. Well, and yeah. sometimes there's a voice against us because, you know, it works for some people, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think they ought to do away with it. I just think exceptions need to be made for communities like ours that are, are so mixed with the agriculture. I wonder if there would be a way to balance, like, ability to pay versus economically disadvantaged population. Like, could they use that as a That'd secondary a factor? I don't know. They could, and that might be the way to attack it. Anyway. Okay. Didn't want to derail it. I just was curious. <laughs> well, that's really all I have on the budget that happened that's new, um, and trying to incorporate the changes from the general assembly. You know, we will have to um, approve a budget to send to the board at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, and to Shannon's point a few minutes ago, I mean, there is such a huge difference money-wise in the in the the three budget proposals. Why is that the, the Senate is so much higher than the House, but it doesn't affect our doesn't affect our bottom line that much? The Senate includes the seven percent salary and mm -hmm. the um, bonus that they uh, they don't do the bonus okay. in the House. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for yeah, you know, for us it becomes. Not a wash, but yeah. So that's you not see that bonus payment that the Senate has 154. Yes, that's really the big difference. Okay. <laughs> so, questions and discussion for Shannon in regards. And I know as a board, we'll sit and have a discussion later in the agenda. But any other questions for her in regards to um, the specific budget presentation that she gave to us? And we'll talk as a group later in our agenda. Shannon. appreciate the updated mm -hmm. information. Absolutely. Okay. Caesar, everybody had an opportunity to speak. All right, so we'll have our discussion later in the agenda as we've got it stated there. Um, now a little bit on capital improvement. Uh, only if you have something. Um, we have prepared the, you know, the um, capital improvement budget. And you guys have seen it ad nauseum. <laughs> so um, just if 
Do you have anything that you'd like for us to add or delete? We'd be happy to do so. How did the high school do today with the HVAC system? Um, I did not get any direct feedback. I know uh, we had a conversation with Les saying, please reach out because we know it's going to be 80 degrees. We're on a single line system. Is that the right terminology? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means when you turn it on, it's on. And if you have a warm day, you're not turning it off. It's got to stay on. Is that new or is that? It's, it's an older system. And that's, that, that is a reflection yeah. of. Oh, the seasonal yeah. adjustment. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. It, it may have been dealt with when we were in high school. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, it's old school. It's just you realize, like, today's going to be a tough day. And so uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Walker reached out to his staff the night before saying, hey, you know, yeah. thank you for all your hard work. You're doing a great job. FYI, tomorrow's going to be a bit warm. You know, be, if we can provide some fans, if, if there's things that we can be doing. Um, it's to, you know I think when you try to explain this to someone who hasn't been in schools or doesn't really recognize like that's not a thing it, it is it, in, in a in a well just the, the fact that we can't just turn it off and on or adjust yeah. it like clicking a button over there um, it is a thing and it, and it is tough and you're dealing with kids and it gets hot and it's that middle level and it's on the side where the sun is mm -hmm. it's just, and it's the older wing and there's just a lot to it um, but um, and the weather might be different next week. Well, well it'll be Saturday. Tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow. tomorrow. Saturday. Be in the 50s tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so. Saturday there could be snow. Um, and so that's. Well, we used to burn up every day. So. It, it's Saturday. It's not Sunday or Monday morning. So um, yeah, and I think that's just it's navigating. Our people are. Yeah, I know they're you know they're resilient. They're fighters. It's not fun, but um, it's kind of like. It's not their first time going through it either. That's right. Um, but it's tough. Okay. And, and so that's also, you know, why we're trying to be very thoughtful of when we um, take a look at our facilities and take a look at the necessary things um, and the things that, like, this is just what it should be like in 2023. This is what, this is the environment we need to be providing our students and our staff so they can learn. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're miserably cold or miserably hot, you're not focused on, you know, quadratic equations or sentence structure or anything like that you're focused on i'm hot and what am i going to eat so that, just keep that life. up there on the list i get my point <laughs> of bringing that up oh. is that's a priority yep. you know yeah. it's just got to mean uh, that's not what our students I, and staff should but I, I don't i don't know that that ever i don't know how you ever make that better yeah, so. you, i don't know if you, if you stay with the company that um that controls our temperature outside of the building and then on those days like you said it's just going to be what it is but I don't know how you because if the office is in Ohio and they are 50 degrees up there and you're like hey can you change this for tomorrow you know that just and I don't work. Even think our system well, could change. And I don't know right. that they allow for that because yeah. the whole point of having it is because we're built on peak demand because right. of three phase. Right. And so you need to keep it in heat till this yeah. date and yeah. then keep it in cool till the, after uh, that date. Exactly. You know? I mean, so. until we can come up with, like you said, a better mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. A new system. A new system that we can fluctuate, but yeah. you're not going to fluctuate with this. <laughs> With what, yeah, what these things, you know, anything comes in. <laughs> okay. Or goes out. Because, I mean, our right. school was That's like, right. <laughs> was like, you know, the Nelson Center with those big old windows and the Clapped. radiators would be on. That's and right. That's it would right. be like 9,000 degrees. You have the window open and it would be January. So, um, so <laughs> questions for Shannon or any other comments tied to the capital improvement? No, no, thank you. Everything on it. Hold on one second. Caesar. I had something that I can't remember. Budget? No, it was the capital improvement. Oh. Shannon, where, the only school we don't have the bollards out in front of is um, Rockfish, right? Or Tiger River. We don't have, we have them down the ones at Tiger River. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is in the plan. Okay. Oh, it isn't, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, I know we're with the benches out in front of the high school, so I don't know if we're just going to do the stand-up ones or do something like we did at the high school. We actually wanted crayons. Okay, I got mm -hmm. you. Okay. That is good. Yes. Those yeah. are really nice. Yeah. 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 And with the entire river, 
I was going to say target balls, but I like your crayons better. <laughs> I did not know for years that's what those were. Okay. Right. Are you good? Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> no other questions for Shannon or Dr. Hester in regards to um, her budget presentation or the capital improvements. As always, Shannon, I, this document's great. They're all, awesome. you make it easy for people like me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in regards to our board discussion, um, that portion of the agenda, so, you know, uh, we have a range of 1.2 to 1.5. I think we had initially come in about 1.3, but the bigger, the bigger discussion really is um, what we have said in our budget of needs is um, there are things that I don't think that they are, are from my perspective, I want the opinion of the board, they're not things that we really want to have variables at this point. I mean, we feel very strongly in the things that we have allocated into that budget, and that is um, the increases, the pair of pro stipends, the um, covering the, the principal, yes, the assistant principal, the uh, middle school ISS person. Um, so that was it. I mean, there wasn't a lot of wiggle room. There was really, other than those two positions, really just not any wiggle room in it. So um, in regards to budget discussion, I'd like to give everybody an opportunity to kind of say kind of their thoughts, their feelings, and where you'd like to go from this point. Um, uh, Gina, do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have any comments. I think that what we have there is a budget of need. Um, I guess the only other position that I would love to put in there would be another mental health specialist. Um, because I think that has been needed for years. And uh, with the rate of mental health that's happening, that is only going to increase, and not just for our students, but for our teachers. So if there's an additional position, that would be the one I would put in there. And thank you for bringing that up, because that was per one of the things that you've mentioned, in addition to some of the things that we kind of keep a pulse on in the schools. We believe that if we can do these four things, that we have a way of trying to position ourselves to establish um, a mental health position that we can see how that works for us moving forward without trying to have any ongoing costs. Um, so we might be able to do that and see how we're, if we're using it effectively. Because I, we know that that's something that's really important, but we wanna make sure we get the right position that's gonna impact our kids the most. So that was something we know is important to you that we've also are keeping in, the, in, our, in our minds of being able to figure out how do we add without adding. Does that make sense? It does. I think I'll have to see it play out. Right. Yes. Because I don't know if you're talking about using existing staff and repurposing them and doing something different, adding on duties to existing staff. Okay, good. Because they, they have no more no, capacity. No, no, one, no. No, that's not the, good. the thought process. No. Okay. Um, Gina, anything? Good. Okay. Just want to make sure before we move on. George, thoughts, comments? Um, no, I mean, I think, um, you know, there's a limit to everything, right? But um, I think in this climate that we're in, I mean, we're faced with, with struggles on a bunch of ends. Um, on the one hand, we need to make sure that the kids have the best learning environment they can have and um, that their mental health is, is looked after. Mm -hmm. um, in a very responsible way, which will help curtail, you know, incidents in the schools and which also helps improve learning in the classroom. And then we have to worry about employee retention and we're gonna be getting hammered on all sides from that because our neighbors to the north are gonna really up the ante, I'm sure, um, which we knew that last year uh, when that was gonna happen and our neighbors to the south are gonna do likewise because they can't afford to have all their people taken away. Um, so we kind of have to keep up with the Joneses a little bit. Um, you know, and not that our employees don't deserve it. Our employees deserve every dime, and I want them to be where they should be on the, on the scale um, compared to everybody else in the, in the state, you know. So, um, I, you know, I think at this point we have to just kind of stand pat on what we have, you know. So, see what happens. All right, thank you. Margaret, your thoughts? Um, same, you know, if, if we're doing a budget of need, I think that that's, um, you know, what we're slated to do. 
right? And we, we've had many conversations about what our priorities are, so I think we've already got that ironed out. I do have a question on like where we are, do we say this is our budget based on one of their budgets? As you said before, we pick, I'm sorry, Shannon, um, you, we pick like which one we're gonna go with and uh, I mean, is there any feeling about like we should go with the one with the biggest <coughs> um, deficit so we can say, yay, we don't need that much if it doesn't go that way, you know? Or should we go the way with the lo lowest one and you know what I mean? And then have to go back and kind of, I mean, I would go the opposite. Like I would ask for more and then, you know, say, well, it came in lower than that. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was my only mm -hmm. other thing. Yeah. And, and, and if, as long as we're transparent about that's what we're doing, I think that it, we're yeah. not trying to, you know, we're presenting ourselves the way so we you, want to. So you would recommend that we would go with the house? With the house. house. Yeah. Because if we go in higher and then we can say that, you know, they came out with this is the budget, mm -hmm. then we're not going to have to go back and say, oh, yeah, well, we thought we would need that much, but now we do, which is always a little bit more clumsy. Because mm. I've done it a million times, <laughs> so I know that. Well, it's totally within the realm. I mean, you know, we, we, we went in with the expectation at 1.3. I don't think it's any surprise, or will be any surprise to the Board of Supervisors right. when we explain it to, to the County Administrator right. when we say, here were three options. Mm -hmm. For transparency's sake, yeah. here's why we went with this. Yeah. And yes. does it change what we're asking for? Yeah. It's just the budget we're going to work with mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. just better to be careful. Yeah, you know, yeah you're working yeah. with worst case scenario right. and then you yeah. see what happens. Yeah. yeah, and I like the call out, Margaret, yeah. that we have three, we looked at the one, right. so that we don't have to come back and ask. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I would, it, I would, it would be interesting to me to see, because I'm sure Candy's wrestling with us right now as well, like what is she doing if she's following that same tap? Right. You know, mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, we've had good conversations every step of the way. Mm -hmm. and, you know, our conversations started in July, August. And every step of the way saying, you know, we're going to ask for some things because we need to stay competitive and we need mm -hmm. to hold on to the staff that are our master teachers. Mm -hmm. We also need to bring in and retain, you know, recruit and retain high mm -hmm. quality individuals and not just teachers, high quality individuals. Right. Um, so we, we've, we've tried to make that very clear. No, we haven't always had that great operational knowledge of like what are our numbers that we're dealing with, but mm -hmm. we've tried to make that very clear, like we're waiting on this. Mm -hmm. We just got the insurance in. Right. Um, you know, I went to her, like the House and Senate came up with 7%. You know, the, the governor's budget was 5%, mm -hmm. just so you know. Um, and, and so they've been, and, and I thank her. I mean, I, she's not able to make it this evening. She's really been active and engaged in listening to us talk. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the kind of that one Nelson approach of we're all in this. It's you know as we go, so does the county. As the county goes, as we go. Right. So I appreciate that. And um, so she she's been a part of it. We've been a part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so there shouldn't any be any like huge curveballs right. um, coming mm -hmm. out of nowhere in terms of we're going to add something else. And, right. That's you know. Right. I request to have them changed. Really yeah, appreciate that approach consistent. too because that yeah. helps uh, our counterparts on the board of supervisors. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like you said, we're all in this together. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't I don't look at this as a game. This yeah. is this is uh, a business this is a business that we're in and this is our student yeah, exactly. This is our students and and it's their students too. And it's all of ours and uh, and that's important. It's to to work together. Agreed. Yeah, so and I would like to second the, if we have an opportunity to put some more, you know, supports in, in a mental health capacity, I'm, I'm, I'm for that as well. And if you're sitting behind me, and I just completely ignored you, I'm so sorry, and you've been here quite a bit and following along and paying attention, so I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Wearing your beautiful shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, I think we talk about the mental health supports. I think adding back in that second AP at the elementary level can only help some too to have, while they're not trained for the mental health, it is another person that can potentially be in the buildings mm -hmm. to support, you know, whether it's to capture behavior before it happens or whatever that may be. Different mm -hmm. position I know than the behavioral yeah. specialist, yeah, but. Totally different. It's not the same, but then they, but they deal with a lot of times attendance. Mm -hmm. that then gets connected to something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then that becomes someone else's responsibility as opposed yeah. to um, a, a counselor having to follow this and that. Yeah. Um, because also with that, with assistant principals and admin aides and everything, 
we've added a whole bunch more data, and, you know, the whole another assessment that's been added that they have to pay attention to. Um, so there's just more and more being added to everybody's plates, and we're finding it hard to take things off. Um, and so you have to add people to, to be, in order to take something off of someone else's plate, you have to have a plate to put it on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where those various positions could be so helpful. Um, there are indicators along the way that one person pays attention to, but then the actual addressing of the underlying mm -hmm. contributing factors has got to be, take place and not only in the wheelhouse of just an mm -hmm. administrator, there's a whole nother expertise that's required. Okay. Thank you. So, Margaret, thank you. Um, so, Steve? Yeah, the thought about adding a mental health specialist next year was ESSER three monies. It's a one year pot of money. Yeah. That's why it wouldn't be continuing unless we can show the benefit and have the data to support it yes. to include in next mm -hmm. year's budget. And be able to document mm -hmm. the, the benefits of it and the data taken from that so it's not using someone else. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's someone we're going to hire, not a service we're going to contract out. Right. Or is it, I mean, is it a position we're looking to hire or we're looking to contract? I, I think the initial year would be to contract out right. to be able to because we don't want to hire, that, that would be a continuing ongoing cost right. that we would yeah. not know if we could maintain, but if we contract out, then if we need a longer term relationship, we can extend from that, given the data and the performance. Mm -hmm. so we can hire the next year if we have the position. It, it, right. And, and I also say, like any other industry, there's slim pickings as well. Sure. It's hard yeah. to find. Sure. So, you know, I mean, yeah. sometimes, you know, if. High demand and low supply. Yes. <sighs> Okay. I mean, I mean, I guess y'all understand where I stand with the old people that provide services here in the county and in the surrounding counties. I don't have a lot of faith in those folks. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, sometimes they're more the problem than they are solving the problem. On my, mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. um, so I just, I, you know, we're kind of stuck. You know, there's only like two players in the game. You know, two entities that that's right. that provide that service, and, and um, you know, that's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other um, concerns about um, what was what I saw. Um, it's whatever you know. Y'all feel like that's the best for. Our cause is what I'm behind. So. Um, I, there's really not much more for me to say. I mean, I think uh, we're all in agreement, it sounds like, in regards to present the, the House budget and um, with the explanation of what we're talking about. Again, I go back to the only things we're adding to the budget, we're doing what we're required to do um, based on, you know, whether it's a 5%, a 7%, we're, we're doing what we're required and adding those positions that, you know, are critical to, to keeping our students, we talk about safe and, and healthy and all that. So um, I'm in agreement as well with that. Okay. I have, I'm sorry. Thank I have you. one other thing if I could, and it's not even budget related. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Uh, I just wanted to take a second and acknowledge the passing of Dick Wallace, um, who was school psychologist, right, yes. for many, many years here mm -hmm. and retired from the school system. And he passed away over the weekend, I believe. Yeah, Shannon, I, and I apologize, I did not, yeah. And let's at March 9th just acknowledge that at the broader meeting. Is that, can we do that? Yeah. yeah. He was the school psychologist and the director of and special and ed. Sped. And yeah. 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 So let's at March 9th at the, the full meeting acknowledge that. Um, yeah. Yeah. If, if we can do that. And I apologize for not remembering that in, in our discussion. Um, thank you, George, very much. Thank you, thank you. All righty. So that's, that ends our discussion. Um, I think just based on where we seem to be at a consensus on that, it's not mm -hmm. anything that needs a vote at this point. Um, I will need a motion for us to go into closed session for personnel matters, please. Wait. Oh, sorry. Right here. I have my paper. I have it at the ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 
I move that the school board go into closed meeting to discuss and consider the personnel positions for the Nelson County Public Schools and their other confidential personnel matters as authorized by Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstain? Okay. The motion is passed for now.